We're at the Site C Summit. I'm talking to Chief Roland Wilson. And Chief, you are from the area of the Site C Dam. Yes. Um, can you tell us something about the impact on First Nations and the declara and, and the UN declaration? Well, so the, the impact on my community, uh, you have to put it into context of what's already transpired up there. Uh, the BC Hydro has created the W.A.C. Bennett Dam, which ensued the Wilson Reservoir, which is the largest man-made body of water, I believe, in North America, in Canada for sure. Um, and then in the 80s, they commissioned the dam, uh, the Peace Canyon Dam, which uh, developed the uh, Dinosaur Reservoir. The Dinosaur Reservoir and the W.A.C. Bennett Dam and Wilson Reservoir um, take up about 80% of what's left of the Peace River Valley. Now Site C represents the last remaining 20, it represents 50% of the last remaining 20. So uh, our, our argument has always been that we're not opposed to the development of the energy. What we're opposed to is the unnecessary destruction of the valley. The valley is crucial to our, our way of life. It was the main highway for us. We traveled up and down the rivers. We had gathering places, there's spiritual areas there. When they flooded Williston and Dinosaur Reservoirs, they, they destroyed all those things. They fragmented our people, um, you know, the, the, we were Dinosaur people, we moved around in small groups on the land. So with Site C, the power's not needed. Uh, they don't need that. They've, they know that they can develop uh, uh, wind, solar, geothermal. We were willing to sit down and talk to them, but for whatever reason, they had it in their mind that they were going to build this third dam. Uh, you know, and so when you look at the, the United Nations Declaration on Indigenous People and Tree Part Informed Consent, what it means is you you have to engage with the people, and they have to make a conscious decision to either participate or not participate in 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 that. Now, this government in place now, the NDP government campaigned uh, as, as their campaign, Premier Horgan campaigned that if Site C was deemed to be not a good idea, they would hold, uphold the terms of UNDRIP and FPEC, the Free Part Informed Consent, and terminate the project. So they, when they got in, they sent it towards to the BCUC. Uh, the British Community Utilities Commission, they did their review, they came back and said, Site C is not a good idea. There's better options out there for that. The, the alternative packages I previously mentioned. But then Horgan and the NDP group changed their mind and, and approved it anyways. You know, so I said, that's a direct violation of UNDRIP and FPIC, uh, just on that side of it. Um, it's also a, a direct violation of the treaty right. Uh, it's, an, uh, it's an unnecessary infringement of treaty number eight. Do you think it's possible that what Mr. Horgan was saying all along was a sham, given that there was no reason to go ahead with Site C, and yet, after all the promises and nice statements that were made, they decided to do it. Was it always a sham? I think he said when he need he needed he thought he needed to say in order to get elected, um, you know, and that's what's going on here with the the Site C uh, summit and the accountability forum that's happening here. Is there there are a bunch of people talking about? Well, he made certain promises to people, and those people voted on him to uphold those promises, and then when he got into office. He reneged on those promises, and, and they have to hold him. He has to be held accountable for that. Um, I, you know, I, I have no other way of understanding. Like, how do you say one thing, you know, promise one thing, and then do something else? You know, that's, that, <laughs> that's there's words for that. You know, and that's he needs to be held accountable. I mean, he said he would uphold. Whatever the BCUC report stated, you know, uh, he would implement uh, the Union, the United Nations Declaration on Indigenous People, you know, and the first, his first act when he gets in 
is to approve the St. C dam, which is in a violation of all of those things. You know, so and just to make it clear, from your point of view, there was nothing in the BC Utilities Commission report that would persuade him that Site C had to be built. I would say there was more in the the, the report to persuade him to cancel the project than there was to move forward. Um, the alternatives package, was, they looked at that and they said that's a better option, creates more jobs, less environmentally impactful. Um, there's no need for the power at all. Uh, they, they were very clear on that. They were very clear on that when the joint review panel was put together and they did their report in, in back in the day and they said there's no need for the power. It costs too much. The, the price of hydropower is soaring to the roof while all the other prices are coming down. You know, and, and then they argued what well, creates jobs. Well, the BCUC report has shown that the alternatives package create better jobs, more jobs and better jobs, long-term jobs. You know, so when you look at the cost escalation of what's happening, Site C started at, at 6.9, I believe. And then all of a sudden, it jumped up to 8.9. Now we're at 10.5. You know, and they're saying 12 to $15 billion now. And where does it stop? Who, who gets held accountable for that, right? The, the, how do you spend that kind of money? How can you justify spending that kind of money on a project that's not needed? You know, we are, there's too much energy on the market right now. You know, when they talk about future demands, I just saw a, a, a report out there saying that they're going to sell the power to the Yukon. Well, if it's for future demands of BC, and you sell it to the Yukon, what do you, you know, this it's the Columbia River Treaty all over again, you know. Um, I noticed that Mr. Horgan made his statement on a Monday, and by Wednesday night or Thursday, the media had pushed the story aside, and it was no longer being covered, and really there's been no coverage of this huge story for the past few weeks. Do you have any comment about the media's role in all of this? I, I would say that is a big issue, you know, uh, um, primarily the media is controlled by a couple of people. You know, there's independent organizations like this that are getting their word out there, but the main bodies that are out there are controlled by the media. Right? The media is controlled by certain individuals, and those individuals want to see the money that's going to be generated from these things. You know, and that's I'm disappointed that this is the largest project in Canadian history, and nobody's really picked up on it. It's the most environmentally impactful project in Canadian history. Nobody's really picked up on it. You know, lots of lots of worries and complaints about pipelines and stuff like that, but Site C, if approved or if built, will f help facilitate all those other things that everybody else is mad about. You know, uh, this is, it, I don't understand. We have been jumping up and down, waving our arms, trying to get people's attention. You know, we've got some people down here now paying attention to us. Um, it's been on everybody's radar, but nobody's kind of grabbed it and really ran with it. Do you want to comment on the mercury contamination that will occur in the reservoir? Well, <laughs> we have been living since they flooded uh, the Williston Reservoir. We have been living with the issue of methylmercury. Now, uh, BC puts out a hunting and fishing uh, regulatory guidebook every year. And in that book, it's there's a little caption under the Amanika Peace region. And it says... Um, due to the high levels of mercury in the fish in the Wilson and contributing uh, areas, don't eat too much of the fish because of the mercury levels. You know, so under the treaty, we're promised a way of life. Uh, uh, there's a national oral promise that was made that states that we should be allowed to hunt, fish, and trap as if we had never entered into treaty. Like, after we signed the treaty, as if we had never entered treaty. And there'd be no, it would lead to no forced interference of our mode of life. Well, because of all the mercury, 
we can't eat the fish because there's a huge health risk with that. You know, and nobody's ever done a study. We ran our own study to find out, like, is the mercury going away or is it, what's going on with it? And, uh, a few years back, we, we found that all the fish that we caught had very high levels of mercury. So there was no indication to us that the mercury is disappearing. And this is how long after that reservoir was built? Well, Wilson went to, I believe, was in full pool by uh, 1969. So and it's 2017. Almost, almost so. 50 years and the mercury level is still... Still high. Right. Um, so now with the saving grace that we had was that uh, Peace Canyon was built uh, quite a ways up from the Mowgli and Halfway Rivers. You know, so there was quite a bit of, of um, distance between us. The Mobley River is in the impound zone of where Site C is. The water that's going to be impounded behind Site C is going to flood the Mobley River and the Halfway River. And there's a natural barrier on the Mobley with a set of falls. But the, if they flood Site C, that natural barrier will leave. And they know that they're going to increase the mercury levels because of the what goes on with the reservoirs in, in all the fish that are captured in the reservoir. So now that we've introduced them into, they're going to introduce that right into our lake at Moberly. So we're going to have, like, where, where are we going to be able to harvest fish that we don't have to worry about the, a mercury concern? And, 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 and talking about a, a larger context of understanding what's going on up there, um, there are other rivers that, that we fish, um, and a lot of people are going to say, well, why don't you go fish over there? Well, we have the Murray River, the Pine River, the Wolverine, uh, the Wapiti Rivers, the Burnt River. Well, all those rivers have coal mines on them, and there's selenium issues in those rivers. There's warnings stacked up all on trees, warning people to be careful of the high levels of selenium. So I guess we get to choose. Do we eat fish contaminated with selenium, or should we eat fish contaminated with mercury? You know, and increasingly, that's a decision everybody in the world has to make. Everything well, is contaminated. We shouldn't be that way, though. That's the thing. Like we have always stated that development should happen. That uh, sorry, <laughs> development sh should happen in balance with everything, not not out of balance with things. And we're way beyond that point. You know, the Joint Review Panel stated that somebody has to do a cumulative impact study up in northeastern BC with the amount of development that's already happening. That was one of our arguments. There's too much happening. And W.A.C. Bennett and Peace Canyon created that up there. They, when they got flooded, forestry came in. Um, when they got created, I mean, forestry came in. There was forestry there, but not to the scale it was now. On gas, started to boom up there, mining started to boom, you know, and, and Site C, we heard it from uh, Premier Christy Clark when she was in with the Liberals, you know, it's for LNG, we're going to, we're going to power LNG, uh, you know, and then when L when the LNG dream blew up, or a nightmare, nightmare blew away, you know, dried up on them, um, she was over in Alberta trying to sell it to the Alberta tar sands. So given where we are now, from your point of view, the NDP has approved construction to go ahead. What are the next steps? Well, we have filed an injunction uh, on it. Uh, we're hoping to be in front of the courts in in March, uh, and we're, we want to kill the project. We want the project stopped. Uh, they haven't done what is called uh, an infringement test, which is a, it's called a sparrow test. Uh, um, they are allowed to infringe the treaty, but they have to be able to justify the infringement. We have now the joint review panel stating that they haven't proven their case for Site C. We have now the uh, uh, BCUC report saying there's better options out there, uh, you know, for, for creating the energy. Site C is not a good idea. So when you look at it, well, just with those two reports, they can't justify Site C. They can't uh, justify the cost of it. They, they can't justify the, the in footprint of it, like the environmental footprint of Where it. is the court case now? Well, we just filed that. <clears throat> um, we had all the court cases that we have gone through up to date have been uh, process and consultation court cases. We had to go through all those 
and and then wait for this final decision. This final decision was the one that allowed us to file this new injunction on it, and and we want them to put tools down while we're preparing us our civil case because they get this, they get to have the argument that they're spending. They've spent too much money, and right from the very beginning, we asked them to stop. I stop spending money, you know, save the money in case you know if the if the project gets canceled. You don't. You haven't wasted four billion dollars, which is the argument that Horgan's using right now. We've put too much money into it. And we can't turn back. Christy Clark has pushed it past the point of no return, which she really has. And Horgan, Horgan, has is falling back on them and blaming them to do this, right? But that's not the case. They can stop this at any time, and they would save billions of dollars on this, you know. Uh, and there's alternatives. For, for what they're doing there, uh, you know, it's not it's not the first time a provincial government has dug one hole to fill another hole up just to create jobs, right? Uh, when do you expect the case to be heard and a decision? Well, uh, that's up to the courts, you know, and that's always the challenge. Uh, we're asking for a March date uh, to be in there. If we get that, we're going to ask for an expedited process. We want them to appoint a coin a court. Um, referee, I guess is what they're kind of, they, they monitor uh, the progress and make sure everything is going smooth. One of our biggest concerns is BC and BC Hydro will just drag their feet on this, you know, and, the, and continue to spend money and be able to bring that argument in the back to court and say, well, we're spending too much money, you know. It, it's, we've got a good opportunity with the joint review panel and the uh, and the, the the BCUC report that just just come out, both stating that this is no good. Uh, you know we've got expert witnesses now uh, talking about Robert McCullough, he a forty year expert and and energy stuff is is talking about the fact that this is this is wasteful. There's no need for this. Um, you know uh, Harry Swain yes. has come out and. You know, the chair of the Joint Review Panel has publicly come out and said, this is ridiculous. You know? It's amazing that all this has happened, and yet, it, within the public, almost nobody knows. It's just not being reported. Yeah. You know, my worry is, we've heard rumor, I don't know if it's true, but we've heard rumor just before Horgan and now made the decision to continue to move forward, that they got a pretty sizable contribution from one of the big steel unions. There, you know, and those guys are pushing them. And if you know the NDP, they were union guys, right? That's their big thing is, is union. Which nothing wrong with that, you know. Everybody wants to go to work, um, but what we want to do is make sure that if there is work to be had, it's good work, you know. Yeah, not destroying the planet. Yeah, you know, and that site C is not clean, green, at all, on that. Chief Roland Wilson, thank you very, very much. Thank you.